Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Robert Barden. I'm here with the North Carolina State University North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service, and I'm the moderator for today's webinar, Online Mapping Tools for Natural Resource Professionals, Part 1, My Land Plan. And as you can indicate from the Part 1, this is actually the first of a four-part series. So as we get started here, I just want to give you a quick orientation of uh, Blackboard Collaborate if you've not used it before. Um, there's a couple features you want to be aware of. First of all, there's uh, what's called the Audio Setup Wizard. It's up there at the top of the participant window. You'll see it up there in line with where it says Audio and Video. So if you're having trouble with your audio today, I ask that you go up and select that and go through the audio setup wizard and that will ensure you have proper audio for today and you can adjust your uh, volume level. We'll also be polling today and what that means is we'll be asking you some questions and we'd like a response to those questions. They'll either be yes, no type questions or multiple choice. And the polling button is right below your name, and you'll see it's the fourth icon, and currently it has a check mark in that box. And we'll uh, demonstrate how that works here in a minute for you. We are uh, recording today's session, and the chat is what they call supervised. And what that means is that uh, as presenters and moderators, um, we're able to see all messages, even those that are marked private. So if you're sending a message to a friend across country um, and you're doing it, you think it's private, just be aware that we do see that information and we actually record the chat. So we ask that you keep your chat relevant to today's session, uh, asking questions and things like that. Or if you need something clarified or are having trouble or something, feel free to put it in the chat window. And you can do that right down here at the bottom of the chat window. And we'll re, uh, follow up with you as the webinar goes along. With today's webinar, I, can, I know James has asked, will be asking that if you'll hold your questions to the end um, so that we can get through the material and then ask your questions. So if they come, uh, if the question comes up, feel free to, to type it into the chat window, but realize we won't uh, be answering them until the end of the session. So first thing is up, before we get going here, let me set up our first poll so you can practice. You'll see that this is a multiple choice response. And if you could give us an indication why you joined today's webinar, I'd appreciate that. You can do that by clicking on the icon right below your name that has the small letter A in it, and it'll give you the choices. Okay, it looks like those that are going to respond have, so let me uh, publish those up to the whiteboard so everybody can see what the response looks like. And as you can see, most folks today are joining because of the subject matter. Let's uh, move on now to our next slide here. Let me clear the previous poll. And at this time, if you could give us an indication of what best represents you as a participant. Okay, let me publish those up to the whiteboard so J James can see them, gives him an idea of his audience today. And we have a good mix of different types of people. And we appreciate everybody for joining today's session. And at this time, let me introduce our presenter today. Our presenter is James Yoik. 
He's an extension associate here at North Carolina State University with the Extension Forestry Program. And he's also the vice president uh, handling administration for the North Carolina Tree Farm Program. James, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Bob. Uh, can you hear me well? We can, thank you. Okay, very good. All right, well, it's a pleasure being here. Um, and uh, uh, my uh, work with the uh, North Carolina Tree Farm Program has been really uh, rewarding these past few years. One of the things that has been really interesting to see is a lot of the improvements that have been taking place at the national level. And uh, this My Land Plan that we're going to be exploring today is a really excellent, excellent tool uh, for both uh, resource professionals and for landowners as well. So uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, kind of exploring that and the map making. Uh, this is an online mapping tool for natural resource professionals primarily, but anybody's welcome, obviously. And uh, we're going to be exploring through the series uh, a number of different ways of creating maps online using interactive uh, mapping software that's free, which is always the best. <laughs> and uh, so it's not going to be like a GIS uh, type of uh, 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 you know, a series of workshops. It's going to be primarily things like Google Earth and, and this really neat uh, application in my land plan. So uh, let's move along here. If we can get a quick poll of uh, where you are webbing from, that would be useful. And while, I'm, while you're answering this question, I'd also like to say at the very end, if you um, uh, plan on attending next, or it's actually in two weeks, uh, we're going to be exploring things such as county uh, mapping uh, websites, uh, county GIS websites. And if you want me to try to uh, uh, explore and use your county as, a, uh, as an example, uh, type in your county and your state at the end of the uh, end, end of the session today, and I'll go ahead sometime between now and two weeks from now and look at that county and see if it's something that I could use as a good example. So it's always nice to have something uh, across the country here. Looks like the uh, majority of our folks uh, are from the East Coast, but we do have folks from uh, all across the country, which is really good to see, and I appreciate you all taking the time out <laughs> to explore this with us. So uh, what we're going to cover today is really two parts. We're going to just take a real brief look at uh, what maps are and why we use maps uh, as natural resource management tools. And uh, how, can we, uh, how can good maps assist in fulfilling management goals? And being that I, I do work, <laughs> I do a lot of my volunteer work with the uh, American Tree Farm System, uh, I'm going to take a look at some of the sta certification standards as a surrogate for a good management plan. And uh, how can some of these uh, American Tree Farm System standards be met uh, simply by developing good maps? Part two is we're going to actually go into uh, the American Forestry Foundation sponsored uh, My Land Plan, do an overview of it, uh, overview of the mapping elements. Um, and then, <clears throat> so that's, that's going to be a lot of the meat right here is, is spending time just showing you how you actually create uh, spatial uh, map information on my land plan. And then we'll spend some time looking at some of the other really neat things about my land plan, uh, setting goals, uh, storing important documents, uh, uh, logging and blogging and, and finding resources that are out there. We will spend the last 10 minutes answering questions. So uh, what exactly is a map is the first part. Uh, what are the important elements of a good map? And how can maps assist in fulfilling management goals? How can maps help achieve the American Tree Farm System standards? So I've got yet another poll for you. <laughs> uh, uh, this is uh, take about uh, 10 seconds and read through this really quick and, and give us your, your best answer. Looks like we're 
ready to see the poll. I pretty much know what the answer is going to be all across the board. <laughs> so just about everybody says it's uh, who's answered this says it's a uh, it's all of the above and indeed it is um, maps are a series of symbols conveying spatial information and they're abstract information could be these dots could be these areas or it could be lines representing roads and uh, so it's a series of symbols. Uh, maps are also generalizations. Uh, we don't want to see everything in the world on the map. That's what aerial photography is for. Um, here's a really good kind of a tongue-in-cheek example of a uh, generalization that made a real point. This is a, uh, uh, a, a map that was published by the John Birch Society back in, I think it was probably the 60s or so. And it was uh, to show how poor little United States was surrounded by communist sympathizers uh, all around the world. And uh, they used a, a, a um, standard projection called the Mercator projection. But what that projection does is it really explodes uh, information on the, uh, uh oh, I just, <laughs> I'm going to go back forward. Something just happened with my, my graphics. Um, but anyway, uh, so, uh, Continents that are in, in the north and south uh, uh, regions of the world get really exploded very large. So it looked like the United States was getting smothered by uh, communist regimes. And, uh, so, and they're also a vital uh, resource planning tool. And uh, this is just a, a good example of, of looking at uh, some of these uh, various stands and uh, how they're, how they're uh, actually managed by using a good map and keeping track of things. The important elements of a good map, every good map needs to have these, at least these three things. One is a, a good theme, and I've blocked out the landowner's name here, but here's the theme. It's basically the name and what this map is depicting, aerial uh, photography and the management units, which are depicted in this yellow boundary lines. But uh, descriptive symbology is also very important, as you can see through the legends down here, and labels through a, uh, a north arrow, so folks can see which direction is north on the map. And then um, one very important uh, item is having some sense of scale on the map. If you don't have that, people don't really know what you're talking about in terms of uh, distances and those sorts of things. So those are very important elements to have on any map. And uh, so how do you manage uh, or how do you provide your, uh, the achievement of your management objectives by using maps? They, they could be ex excellent planning tools if you use them uh, correctly. In this case, what we have in on this map, this is a soils map of that same property. This yellow area happens to be a sawnook soil, which is a colluvial soil up in the mountains of North Carolina. Very, very productive soil. Excellent soil for yellow poplar. If I'm looking for the best area for yellow poplar management, that might be a really good choice. But there's also other soils that are equally as good for yellow poplar. However, if I want to try to get equipment up there, I may have to look at another map to uh, include in my planning. And this, I know it's really hard to see, but this is a topographic map. And it shows um, the slopes and the uh, steepness of, of all the uh, areas on that property. And this area up here also happens to be a, uh, a less st steep area. So that between those two, that allows me to pick the best place okay, for, a, uh, for yellow, uh, yellow poplar management. Uh, it could also allow me to preserve areas, okay? Let me know and let everybody know where uh, waterfalls are on that property or special sites. Um, and then also be able to develop road systems and, and show the, all the access systems, uh, existing and planned access routes throughout the property. <clears throat> uh, other good ways of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, telling stories about your property, uh, showing areas where you're might be your favorite places, what's your current uh, plans for forest revenue, and then what's your future plans for forest revenue. 
And uh, they don't all have to be on the same map. And the beauty of my land plan, th these are all developed in my land plan, by the way. You could turn on and off any one of these so that you can only see what that layer that's of importance to you at that particular time. So uh, you may be interested in some sort of a certification scheme for your property. American Tree Farm is one of three that are uh, recognized in the United States. And um, they have a series of standards that they go by. Even if you're not interested in, in a, uh, having your land certified, these are actually very good standards to go by if you're developing a forest management plan for your property. Uh, the American Tree Farm System actually has templates for uh, forest management plans. If I have time later, I'll pull open one up to let you take a look what's inside. And, uh, but they basically have eight standards. And if you follow these standards, uh, you are probably uh, going to be practicing very good forestry. And uh, standard one is the commitment to practicing sustainable forestry. And they have these indicators that they look for when they're doing their audits. And uh, so having a track map accurately depicting significant forest related resources. Well, that's what you could depict here on my land plan. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It, we use the word accurately. Um, and it doesn't have to be extremely like surveyed accurate, but you know you want to get down to the nearest acre on it, and uh, and be as careful as possible. But not only does uh, this stand that's highlighted right here with the, with the dots all around it, uh, it, it, show, it not only does it show you that on the map, but we can also provide other information about that piece of property, that text information, or about that one stand. So that's a white pine plantation planted in 73, uh, what its basal area was in 2013, um, what the goals are for it, and what the, the management plans are for that. And you can input all that stuff so that every time you click on that, this information pops up. And you could always change that information as well. Very important stuff if you're trying to let other people know that you're following uh, these important standards. Uh, Here's uh, still part of uh, standard one. Uh, other uh, resources, uh, wildlife viewing areas, uh, road systems, uh, hunting stands, uh, where, where an old, uh, old mill might be, okay, special areas, other special areas where we, where we dunk grandpa or the family cemetery. So these are special sites that are all across the, the property. They're all depicted on the map as well. And uh, you could also monitor things over time. For instance, uh, you got a road blowout uh, in this that point right there. And so th basically, what was done to remedy that was in spring 2011, they placed a 24-inch culvert with broad-based dips on the other side. So you know you're showing them, uh, the folks that you are indeed managing your land uh, for uh, the best uh, environmental and sustainable uh, uh, conditions. Another way you can monitor change might be just for your own information or for other folks. Uh, it could be uh, monitoring some sort of a, a insect or disease problem that you may have out there. In fall 2010, uh, this area right here was uh, infected or had a, a little small spread of uh, canker worm uh, defoliation. No trees died, but they were defoliated. 2013, you could see how that has spread okay, over time. Again, no mortality, but it is interesting to keep an eye on something like that. And the list goes on. There are other standards as well, uh, which all can be, uh, to some extent, uh, addressed by good mapping. Uh, reforestation, afforestation. Maps showing where your reforestation stocking is adequate. Uh, soils, uh, wa air, water, and soil protection. Uh, soil maps, uh, where your buffer zones are. Uh, fish and wildlife uh, diversity, uh, where the locations of threatened and endangered habitats are, or habitats of biodiversity concerns. All can be depicted on maps. Forest aesthetics, well, we kind of looked at some of that. Uh, some of the special sites uh, could be recreational, spiritual renewal areas, vistas, or they could be actual uh, historic areas as well. Uh, show cemeteries, uh, old mine shafts, very good for liability. 
All right, so <laughs> you let, it's kind of a warning, letting people know uh, where an old iron forge might be on your property. Okay, so those sorts of special sites uh, to be protected and uh, keep loggers out and those sorts of things. And then also uh, forest harvest products, uh, showing locations of near future harvests, uh, major skid routes and landings. So, you know, just remember, anything that's in your plan, uh, you can help tell its story uh, by uh, putting it on the map. So that probably generated some questions. And, and uh, if you have some, go ahead and type them in. And we'll, we'll address those later on. But I wanted to uh, devote pretty much the next 20 minutes or so, next half an hour, it looks like I've got about a half an hour or 25 minutes or so, uh, talking about uh, my land plan and uh, do an overview of it, uh, overview of the mapping element. That was a lot of those pictures we were looking at. Um, how do you assemble your data for map creation, finding your property uh, using my land plan, creating points, lines, and areas, and saving and editing your work. Um, and then we're also going to be taking a look at some of the other features of my land plan, such as storing important documents uh, aside from your maps and setting goals and, and uh, actions. So uh, uh, the American Forest Foundation uh, has created this really neat uh, website, My Land Plan. It's really easy to get to. All you do is you type in My Land Plan, <laughs> and you can Google that, or my, MyLandPlan.org, and it gets you right to the website. And uh, what it allows you to do is to, uh, to identify and explicitly state your ownership goals, explore management options and steps, keep a record of activities, find advice from professionals, and also you can do peer-to-peer -peer, uh, knowledge sharing, okay? which is really neat. That's, I think, one of the real benefits of it is you can talk to other people who uh, are in, have the same uh, goals and aspirations as you do for, for uh, land management. This is also a very good tool for, for uh, professional foresters as well. And you could log in and set up a, uh, a, uh, a pretty much a, like, a, a, like a website for yourself there. And uh, you can actually be uh, 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 set yourself up so that you can answer questions for landowners and those sorts of things. And I'll show you that in just a minute as well. So anyway, um, it's all set up in this one little website here. And uh, we're going to get out there in just a minute and take a look at it. Uh, the mapping component of my land plan is an essential part of it. Uh, maps, you know, they, they tell the whole story of what's going on out there. And uh, you're allowed to depict areas and acreages uh, of areas that you want to manage. And that's, uh, that's really nice. Google Earth does not automatically calculate acreages unless you buy the uh, subscription for them, which is 400 a year. Uh, my land plan calculates acreages for you automatically. It's a really easy to use in this interface. One thing that's really nice is you don't, there's only a couple of times where you actually have to hit save. Just about every time when you create something, it automatically stores it for you. Uh, you can turn on or off different layers using this uh, layer uh, feature layers. Uh, uh, that's basically a menu that turns on and off these different layers. And then one last thing that's kind of neat is it's really easy nowadays to clip these maps out and paste them into a Word document. So you turn on what layers that you want to see on your map. You, you clip that map and you paste it in your Word document as, as part of your management plan. So where do you begin? Well, you got to start with some basic information. Uh, you need to have a property boundary. Uh, it could be a parcel map. This was taken from the county GIS website. You could print that out and use that. Unfortunately, my land plan does not uh, uh, import any data. You have to manually uh, do heads up digitizing. You actually have to digitize all your data into it. That may change down the road, but this version, my land plan is pretty new. This version of it does not allow for that. But um, if you go to your county GIS website, and that's what we're going to be exploring next time, uh, you can print out a map uh, like this one here, and you could digitize that information in. It could just, uh, your management units uh, that you're hoping to, to do could just be something that you hand drew. 
Okay, you may have a, a, a depiction of what your what your property boundary looks like, and in, inside that you draw your management areas. Okay, and then you can input that, uh, digitize that into your MyLine plan. Um, or you can use, if you're uh, working with a consultant or you are a consultant and you have existing forest management plan maps, uh, those could be used. Okay. Another place where you can get your, uh, your property boundary, at least, is uh, from your survey plat. Okay. And everybody should have one if they've got a legal survey done on their property. And uh, so you can go ahead and grab that and, and, and put it. You do need to uh, have something to get started with, though. Okay. Uh, other important sources of data are uh, aerial photography and transportation. Fortunately, they're both provided in my land plan. So in my land plan, you could either turn on the aerial photography or you could turn on just the background map that shows just the road systems. And you, you can see the road systems are actually depicted on the aerial photography as well. So that's nice to know that you don't have to load that information up. It's already there. Other important sources of information uh, could be a hard copy of, uh, of your soil uh, on your property, and your NRCS office can help you with that. Uh, there are our online versions of being able to go and get uh, download the surveys, the whole books for your county. Um, there's a tool that we're going to explore next week called the Web Soil Survey, and that allows you to actually create a soils map, and it prints it out. Uh, for you, not only uh, the, the map itself, but detailed information about the uh, management uh, capabilities of those soils. And that's found at this, this website here. We're, like I said, we'll explore that next week. Or your county GIS and mapping site may actually offer uh, uh, soil maps for your, uh, for your particular county. So there's a lot of places where you can get soils. Good information to have. Topography is also good. You can get hard copies. At, uh, probably at your county mapping office, at your county library. You can order uh, topographic maps from your USGS. And then there's also free topographic map downloads from uh, uh, the USGS store. Uh, but again, you cannot import that in. You would have to manually digitize each one of these lines that represents uh, a different elevation. So that could be a little bit tedious, but good information nonetheless. So let's do a quick show of hands. Uh, those of you who have actually used my land plan before have gone in there and taken a look. I heard. I heard about six dings, <laughs> seven. <laughs> okay, so we're up to 13. So not very many uh, out of this whole crowd. Uh, about one-eighth or one-seventh of the folks here have actually used my land plan. So this is good information for you all. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go out to my land plan. I'm going to do application sharing now. And the biggest problem I have with this is the refresh rate on the screen. And hopefully I'm going to, I've got a monitor turned on that shows, and hopefully this will work. Let me pull my, my land plan over here. See if we can get that guy to fit in there. Very good. So I'm, I've got another monitor here that's supposedly mimicking what you all are seeing. I could see that it's, the refresh rate is relatively slow. That's the biggest problem with this, uh, uh, with any of these webinar uh, series uh, software, is the refresh rate when you're doing some fairly large graphics. And we're actually going to be doing some uh, fairly large graphics, especially with the aerial photography, but. Um, I'm going to log out here. No, I'm, it's probably not very easy for you to see, but uh, if you typed in my land plan, which is what I've got typed in up here, uh, mylandplan.org, it will bring you to this website. And if you 
not logged in, then the first thing you want to do is get started. Okay? But before you do that, you may even be more interested in finding out a little bit more about the privacy policy because this is a server-based uh, application. Okay? Nothing stores on your computer. And it's all stored on their server. So you probably want to take a look at the privacy policy. They're not going to take your information and, and sell it and th those sorts of things. But they may use your information to try to better their product down the road. And you may or may not want to get involved with that. So, um, but believe me, I've never gotten you know, to any point where I felt like my, my privacy was being infringed upon uh, by signing in. But that is something that, that's important. So you may want to go down to the bottom of the screen there and click on that sometime and read through that and see if that's uh, something that you want to get, interest, uh, you know, uh, get involved with. Uh, so typically you would go to get started and you go through a regular registration process. Okay? I've already registered under two accounts. One is a professional uh, forester and I'm going to log in under that account so that uh, So you professionals out there can see what that looks like and what your opportunities are. So here's my uh, little page that they've set up for me. And you put a nice looking picture of you out there and uh, uh, your contact information over here, uh, your email. Uh, all, all this information about you, areas that you want to serve, your education, your experience, and then services offered, which is kind of neat. So you'll see later on, they've got these, well, up here you see the enjoy it, protect it, make it healthy. Each one of these are topics that they address in different ways in, in my land plan. And here you're showing that you're able to, um, to uh, help landowners uh, with within these particular areas. Um, and then re request consultation. If you, and you'll see it as a landowner, if you want to have a consultation with a, uh, with a, uh, uh, with a, uh, somebody who's registered, a professional who's registered with my land plan, uh, you can go ahead and click on that and it'll, it'll send me a, some information uh, or, or that your request. I'm going to go ahead and log out and log back in as Mr. Landowner this time. So if you're working with landowners or if you are a landowner out there and you want to use this from that standpoint, uh, you'll see the basic format for that. Oops, wrong email address. And we'll try logging in there. Okay, so once you actually create an account with my land plan, it's going to automatically put you into the section that's called my plan. Uh, and that's either by clicking here or you can get to it by clicking on my land as well. But before we do that, I just want you to see some of these uh, items that you're talking about here is uh, enjoy it. And <clears throat> what's really cool is under enjoy it, it gives you all these different topics here, okay, that uh, that you can uh, peruse through and actually download and uh, and get a lot of good reading material and ideas from. So under enjoy it, there's uh, wildlife watching, hunting, biking, birding, fishing, uh, establishing your family's connection with the land. Under protect it, it's got things such as. Uh, Protecting it from natural disasters, pests and weeds, trespassers, insurance information, sharing your woods, special sites, protecting uh, special forests, making it healthy. Well, you might guess that pests and weeds are also involved with that. Uh, forest Health 101, tree planting, soil and water conservation, why it's important to keep logs, uh, uh, snags, logs and brush piles. Ways of profiting from your land. Uh, through hunting leases, uh, financial assistance programs, uh, har managing a timber harvest, and uh, certifying your sustainable timber. Uh, and then passing it on, 
very good information, building connections to your woods, things to think about when planning for the future, sharing your plan with your, with your family, finding the right estate planner, truth about trusts, conservation easements. Uh, so if you're curious about those, they've got information on that as well. And uh, so uh, all kinds of good information out there. As far as what you do, you have these different things that you can click on over here. Uh, my land puts you back into um, into the the plan, your actual plan. Okay, uh, ask a forester, which is kind of neat. This the two projects I've got on this map right here are the Stormy Holler and Solwet Cove. Those are my personal properties. Okay, I've actually got two properties. I can keep adding more and more properties by clicking on the Add Property. And we're going to demo that in just a minute. Uh, the, uh, when you create a new property, it, it gets your, your city and state. And it finds those people, those professional foresters who have signed up, who registered with my land plan. Um, and it provides their names for you, which is really neat. So, for each one of these properties, if I have a property in the east side of the state, it would show me those foresters on the eastern part of that state. Uh, it also recognizes that I'm in North Carolina when I've created this project. And it's showing me all the information uh, for resources specific to North Carolina, such as best management practices, IPM, pesticide resources and regulations, and uh, resources for special sites. Very, very nice information right at your fingertips. Every time you open up my land plan, that information is going to be there and allows you, uh, providing you the proper links. The uh, other things that you see when you've created a project is this history. We're going to come back to that um, in a minute. This is where I'm actually able to store uh, important documents, such as if I have a forest management plan in a Word document, I could load it up there. And it's always stored there. Uh, if I have a soil report for that area, and it's in Word document or PDF, I can load it up there and it's stored. Uh, any important information, pictures, you name it. Uh, you can load up all kinds of information on, uh, in the history section. My goals, I'll show you how you're going to set that up in a little bit. Uh, make, you know, and they've got dozens and dozens of goals for you to choose from. Goals immediately translate into actions. And so when you have, you have a goal, then you're going to try to, uh, they provide you with uh, actions that, will, uh, that you can uh, use to fulfill those goals. Um, and uh, my upcoming activities, uh, my overdue activities, in case it, you've stated that you're going to do something and you hadn't gotten to it yet. And then uh, features and points of interest. These are all the parts of the map that I've created. And the more information that you add to your map, the larger this list grows. It shows me the acreages for all of that. So uh, pretty neat. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at how you start from scratch with one of these. Okay? And uh, so the first thing you do is click Add a Property. And you get this great big sign here, <laughs> Plotting Your Land's Future. Okay? So the first thing you want to do is add your land's location. And I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to call it a, a, a Smoky Holler. No, I'm going to call it Saw Wet. I'm going to do Saw Wet. Saw Wet 2. Location of the land is, I just type in an address, uh, 7000 Lake Logan Road and Canton. Oops. And uh, you got to be a little bit careful that you get the right state. I actually clicked on Nebraska, <laughs> and all that state information uh, was pointing to Nebraska. You don't need a zip code. And if you do have a tree farm number, you can input it there. But that's all you need to do. And it gets you pretty much started with uh, setting the boundaries of your property. So what it does is it brings me into this screen here and it brings in this case it didn't bring me right smack dab onto the property but there's Lake Logan oh I gotta slow down a little bit 
let, let you guys catch up to me. What's really cool is it you know gives you very simple instructions on how to do it, and it also gives you a video. If you click on that, it walks you through everything I'm going to show you, and you can play that as many times as you want until you get it. And uh, but there's really to move around through it. Uh, you can zoom in by just hitting the rolling the little roller forward on your on your mouse, and uh, or you can zoom out by rolling the mouse backwards. It's you can see it's refreshing as I zoomed in on you, and now I'm going to zoom out a little bit, a little bit more, and uh, if I want to pan. I've got the little pan tool and the drawing tool. Okay, so the pan tool. If I click on that, then I can I can drag and drop, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna drop it right where I had it. But you can drag and drop the image to get it where you want it to be. Okay. So the next step is to actually create my property, and I'm gonna just do this very quickly. Uh, just you know, you could do this as many times as you want until you get it right. That's the beauty with my land plan is you can always come back and re-edit everything. I'm just going to follow uh, Pigeon River right here. Now what I'm doing is um, I'm actually creating the boundary of my property. When I get to the, back to the beginning again, I double click and uh, it uh, it closes it off and it highlights everything in yellow. Okay, if I like that, then I'm good to go. If I want to adjust some stuff, I I just click on it and I get the little dots. So they're called vertices, and I can grab and drag any one of those. And notice when I grabbed this one and moved it, it created two more of the uh, the lighter. They're kind of grayed out. You have really bright ones and you got grayed out ones. The really bright ones, if you move those, it just moves that. But if you grab one of the grayed out ones and move it, notice it, cre it makes that a bright one now and it creates two more. So you can just keep going on and on and on until, uh, until you get it exactly the way you want. It's a very, very handy way of uh, digitizing. So anyway, let's say that's the property. I like it. This is one of the only times you have to hit Save Property Boundaries. And then the next thing is uh, Add Points. And I don't have too much time to dwell on this, but I want to show you that you have a lot of options with it. What it's showing me right now is the Property Boundary. I cannot modify the Property Boundary now. The only way I can modify this is if I go back to this right here at the top, which says Property Boundaries. If I click on that, it puts me back into the previous screen and allows me to edit that property again. Um, so I want you to be aware of that. What I'm ed creating and editing in this screen it, under the map screen is the Add and Draw Features. So uh, they give you a lot of options. If I say Draw an Area, it puts up a template on this side, and I can pick any one of these. And these are the pre-made colors, okay, for area tools. I could draw lines. It shows me the line template. And draw objects, such as a point. Okay, these are all points right here. And um, then they also have these other kind of mixtures of things, such as wildlife habitat. If I want to do a prescribed burn or a food plot or cover or brush pile, any one of these uh, I can go ahead and choose from under wildlife habitats. And same with healthy woods. They have tree planting, thinning, prescribed burns. So a lot of different options there. Um, I'm just going to go draw an area. I'm going to go trees. And just want you to see how easy it is to digitize with this. I'm just clicking with my mouse. and close it off. Now it automatically saved that. Um, it actually included a spot where I didn't want it to 
it, it closed it off a little too soon, so I'm moving these vertices to better capture what's going on there. And the thing I want you to see about this is when you click on it, what it does is it gives you the acreage and it gives you some detailed information. Uh, right now, there's no information other than it's trees or woods. So I clicked on detailed information and it allows me to do things such as change the color. Okay, and I just pick over here somewhere which color I want to make. I'm going to leave it the same color. Or under basics, I can call it, under trees and woods, I can call it management unit number one. I can call it anything I want. It's my management unit. <laughs> um, and I could say that this is a white pine, 80 years, site index, equals 85, on and on and on and on. And what I want you to see here is when I click Save and Close, now all that information, as soon as it loads back up, is listed there. The big problem is it's all kind of glumped together. All right? If I want to separate this information, this is, I haven't seen this in any of their, their information, but anybody who's done any kind of HTML <laughs> which is what all this is stored in, uh, knows this right here. And you can just jot this down. It's the, it's the lesser than sign, BR for break, the greater than sign. I'm just going to copy that and paste that into each one of those. And what that does is that forces a break between the lines. If I hit save and close now, it shows up a little bit more organized. Okay, which is kind of nice. So that the, the greater than or the less than BR greater than sign and you just type that and it breaks your lines up for you. So I can go on and on and on, add as much information. I, I've actually gone as far as in, and copied whole uh, paragraphs from Word documents and pasted them in there and it works just fine. Uh, so you can get as, as detailed as you want and all that information always pops up every time you want to, uh, you want to see it. To, turn that off, you just click on that little close button on the upper right hand corner. And I'm going to create, just real quickly, just so you can kind of see a couple more things. I'm going to put a stream in here. Kind of follows down to down to the river. And it automatically saved that. Uh, under features now, I've got management unit one, stream and river. I could turn off management unit one and just look at the stream if I want. Okay. So, and then if I double click on the stream, then it allows me to go ahead and change more information about it. So all kinds of uh, options there. And uh, same with points and, uh, and other, op other, other features as well. So as much, much information as you want. And again, if you kind of lose track of how you do all this, They've got videos that walk you through all this. And uh, so one thing I did want to do is go back to my plan overview for this. And here's my new pr project, SawWet2. I don't have any goals yet. Uh, if I click on Add Goal, it says, all right, you've mapped it. Now let's talk about what you want to do with the land. And you've got all these under protected, you've got all these different items here. Each one of those uh, has more actions involved with it. So you can set up your goals and your actions. And if an, you have an action that you want to do, such as consult a, a forester, uh, or if you've already provided adequate food sources, you can do done. So you can click off things that you need to do and things that you would like to do as well. Um, if I say, okay, I want to consult a forester, it has some basic information on it on the action of consulting a forester. It gets me in touch with my state agency uh, and other actions to consider that, that are related to that. So there's just no shortage of information out here uh, that for, for you to look at. And uh, 
And then it also has uh, advice for this action. And over in the right hand side. So choosing a consulting forester might be some advice I'd like to, to get. And it gives me some readings. If I don't have time to read it right now, I can just go ahead and add it to my reading list. And then when I go back to my land, you see down here it's got under my bookmarks choosing a consulting forester. So all kinds of really neat stuff that's out there. I'm going to go back to SawWet 1, which is an already existing one. And uh, Stormy Hollers is yet another property. But uh, actually, let me go to Stormy Holler. I want you to kind of see under the history some of the information that you could store as well. And then I think that's probably as far as we're going to be able to go today. But under the history, I've copied and pasted stuff right out of my management plan and pasted in there uh, basically the history of it. Got some photographs, aerial photographs. One is of the soils. And I have a little caption there. Here's the soils. Uh, another, another image that I captured from the Haywood County GIS website and pasted it in there. Um, another image of the, the Yoik family grave site. We don't really have a grave site. I just chose that. <laughs> Uh, and then, the, then there's great old grandma Amelia Yoik, who was uh, <laughs> buried in the gravesite there. And that's the picture of her gravestone. But what's also neat is documents. I've loaded all these documents out there. And uh, very, very simple to do. Uh, the, store, the soil report, uh, take a look at that. And it's a 100-page PDF file of all the different soils out there and, and what's the best for yellow poplar and, and just all kinds of really important information based on the soils. And uh, That's the story out there for me or for my kids uh, to open up anytime they want. Uh, information on roads, uh, there's the forest management plan that was developed. Um, and I just want to show you how simple it is to load something up and then we'll call it good. But in order to add something to the history, I click Edit. And there's images. I can load up new images. Under Documents, I'll go New File. And I'm going to load up a PDF of the original King's Grant of the property and upload it. And boom, it's there, King's Grant. And I know we've got it here as well, but I'll just <laughs> And uh, this is one spot where you do have to hit save at the very bottom, right there. Saves it. And now under my land, whoop, there we go. Uh, huh. Oh, and probably because I had it already in there. It's not allowing me to do it again. So. Let me just remove that. But it did remove, I mean, it does load it. And um, so we'll go back to my land. And probably just as good a time to stop as any, huh? <laughs> hey, James, this is Bob. There we We've go. got about five minutes. Yep, OK. So uh, that's just a real brief overview of my land plan and a lot of good opportunities for you out there. I'm going to go ahead and close out the uh, this window and get back into our screen if I can find it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay. So, I'm ready to answer questions now. Okay, James, our first question is 
Is there a standard way to identify logging roads, names, numbers, et cetera, on maps? Uh, not really. Uh, I, the, uh, you know, you can come up with your own uh, color system uh, that depicts them, and that's probably what I would choose, you know, just one, one color for, for main roads, another color for logging roads, another color for trails, and those sorts of things. So it's whatever you want, pretty much. I haven't, I'm not aware of, of a standard that folks use. So the next question has to do with, um, are there specific mapping programs available for small acreage landowners? And can the consulting forester help with that? And then the other question, actually she responds back that, uh, can the land program that you were demonstrating, can that be used for personal use only, but not publicly seen? Exactly. You uh, log in and you have a password, and that information and all your information is only seen by you or by anybody who you provide the password to. So yeah, that's not public information. That's a very good question. Okay. Actually, the last two questions, I think you answered that. They were dealing with the privacy of the program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, the next question is, do you have any choice of imagery to choose from, and can you delete vertices? Uh, <clears throat> you cannot delete vertices on it, and so you can just keep moving them until you get them where you want them. <laughs> and uh, uh, what was the first part of that question? Um, can you change the imagery? Oh, yeah. Uh, the imagery, this actually, my land plan sits on top of Google Maps. And so whatever the most recent Google Maps imagery uh, is, they're using, that's what you have. So if you look at it, it's just Google Maps with, with uh, an application on top of it. Okay, the next question is, is there any way to display latitude and longitude while you're creating boundaries, features, et cetera? Unfortunately, no. Uh, this really is a kind of a first version of this. The, this has only been out about a year now. And when it first came out, I, I just didn't even want to teach with it because it wasn't really what I felt close to the point of, of getting landowners involved with. but. Uh, now it's become a much more simple tool and a lot easier to use, a little bit more powerful. And I think that's just going to get better and better as time goes on. Or at least that's my hope. OK. Um, can you geo-reference a hard copy with the aerial image? No, you cannot. <laughs> uh, it, is uh, it, everything is geo-referenced, but you don't have any way of getting in and and, and uh, leveraging that information. It's they, they don't provide you any uh, any coordinates, and there's no way of of taking something and and uh, or, or taking that image and putting it into like ArcGIS or something like that and having it geo-referenced. It just doesn't provide you that that latitude. So next question, do you have to be an AFA member to use land plan? No, and that's the beauty of it. You don't. Uh, it's open for anybody and everybody to use. And their hope is that you, you, know, you might become an AFF member. But at, at this point, it's available to everybody. All right. What is the cost to use this resource? It's free. Can you export data from this resource? No, uh, not at this point in time. And that's one of the biggest problems with it, is being able to import and export data. But if you know how to do a screen capture, uh, on, uh, you can capture the image and paste it into Word. And if you have any interest in doing that and you don't know how to do it, email me. And uh, email me your phone number, and we could talk offline. And I could walk you through that, simple as can be. And James, can you type your email address there into the chat room? And then Certainly. everybody will have that. 
Um, before we go on to continue answering questions, I just want to point out that this is a series and here are the dates in the different parts of the next uh, three of the four part series. And also now that it's the fact that it's one o'clock, I want to make sure everybody has the um, URL to finish the, if you want to finish the evaluation because you have to go because of the time limit. Um, we want to make that available for you. And I'd also like to ask if you have an interest in, in for the 18th in uh, having me look at your county for a GIS, go ahead and type in the county and the state uh, of interest. And what we're going to do is I'm going to actually push the URL for the redirect that will take you out to this evaluation and the opportunity to complete the quiz and the CEU form if that's what you uh, requested. Um, and so what's going to happen is it will pop open your browser. Uh, it may either do it behind Collaborate or in front of it and it may take a minute or two because of the hundred uh, folks that will mm -hmm. be joining the session. I've also put that link in the um, chat window there. And so if your browser doesn't open up for you, feel free to copy that link and, and come back later. You'll be able to access that form throughout the day. So while that's happening, let me uh, take you back to the questions here. So the, one person was wondering, do you know, has anybody used this for planting farmland such as uh, showing crops, waterways, et cetera? I don't see why not. It could be used for anything you want. And uh, that's the beauty of it. It doesn't have to be forestry. All right. Next, applicability to desert southwest. An absence of forested land seems like it still has a lot of utility. Agree? I agree. <laughs> yep, anything that you could put on the map you can you can use my land plan for. So uh, if somebody adds a property to the site, can the property be deleted later? Yes, uh, good question. Where, where, when you look at the property's name and the address, there's a little, uh, it, it's kind of small, but it says delete property. And when you delete it, it deletes everything. Uh, all the documents you've loaded, pictures, all the maps, everything's wiped clean. So how far back in time are photos available? Uh, again, it's, it varies from portion to portion, I mean, across the, the, the continent, because it's, it's only as recent as the most recent uh, Google Earth uh, uh, satellite imagery. And it may be a year old, it may be four or five years old. But you, it's unlike Google Earth, where you can actually go back in time, you, you don't have that opportunity in, in my land plan. So is there a way to bring in public land survey information like townships, range, and section? Unfortunately, I don't see a way of doing that in, when you're creating the, uh, the, the address. The only thing it's looking for is a, is a street address. And uh, rather than typing in a, uh, a complete uh, public land survey description. Can you export shapes? to a GPS? Unfortunately not. <laughs> that's, a, that's a job for Google Earth. Okay. Do you have to, oh sorry, can maps be printed out? Uh, again, if the, they don't have a print button there on my land plan, but what you do is you you do a screen capture of that and paste it into like a Word document and then you can print that out. And that's very simple to do. And again, if you, if you need some help doing that, uh, email me and I can call you up and, and walk you through that. So can you export other data? Unfortunately not. No, everything that you input into my land plan, you have to manually input it and there's no way of taking it out. Not at this point in time. I've already put in my request to AFF in terms of uh, what I think they should do <laughs> and whether or not they actually do it. 
is another story, but I, I've made lots of suggestions on, on uh, improvements for this. I, I think it's wonderful what it does right now, but it certainly can be improved upon. Are there other land ecotype professionals on the website beyond foresters, i.e. watershed, prairie, et cetera? I assume there are. I haven't really gone out and looked. Uh, when, you, when you create an account in my, on uh, my land plan, uh, not only does it show you the professionals that are in your area, but right where you see those names, it's, you see a button that says, see all professionals, and you can click on that, and it'll open up the whole list. Of, of all the professionals and what they do. And then here's one. Does a similar resource exist in Canada? Not that I'm aware of. I haven't explored that, though. So there very well may be. So is there a, an ability of the site to allow others to view their property without allowing them to edit anything? So in other words, read access only? The, uh, so that if you're sharing that information with somebody, I guess is what, what you mean by that. Yeah, um, I, I think in this case, like if you were going to share it with maybe a, a consulting forester or something, mm -hmm, but you didn't mm -hmm. want them to have the ability to change it or with other family members maybe, right, right. you didn't want them to be able to go in and, and, and change things. I haven't seen that. I, th I think uh, the only, no, I think it's anybody when they log in, if you give them your password, they have read and write capabilities uh, to, the, to change, change the map and stuff. And uh, I haven't seen any way of kind of turning off certain uh, capabilities. If the property doesn't have a street address, is there a way to identify the, that information, you know? Yeah, yeah properties without street addresses. Exactly. How would they use yeah. the site? Uh, what I would do is uh, type in the road name and the town and get it as close as possible. Maybe uh, type in the street address that's not far from where you are, and then just use the uh, pan until you can identify through the aerial photography. Most people know what their property looks like on aerial photography. Uh, if you don't, you can get a copy of it from your county mapping office and then you can see what your property looks like from the air and then you can scroll around in my, my land plan going up or down that road until you find that area. So do land, server, do land surveyors know how to put their survey information into my land plan? There, unfortunately, there's no way of getting that precise of information into my land plan. Everything is just done by heads up digitizing. So there's really no way of inputting coordinate based information uh, down to the you know down to the nearest tenth of a foot like a surveyor would. And uh, so no, there is no way right now uh, of doing that. You can in Google Earth, but it's tedious. Okay, thank you, James. I'd like to thank everybody for taking, uh, participating in today's webinar. Um, this session is being recorded, and so it will be available for viewing uh, here later this afternoon. And so if you have other people that you know that were trying to join the session or didn't have time, feel free to pass that information on to them. Thanks, everybody. And thank, thank you, James, for all the effort in putting together a great uh, presentation today. You are welcome. Looking forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks.